to the third episode of Cough. <laughs> Cough, the uh, the famous, not really, uh, educational podcast with a little bit of humour thrown in there and there. More humour yes. than, 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 than fact, let's be honest. But, you know, we're <laughs> trying our best. <laughs> That's okay. So, firstly, we just want to say thank you for, well, if you're a first-time listener listening to us and Welcome. making it this far. And if you're not, thank you for sticking with us True. as we get used to podcasts, as we become more smooth with yeah. our videos yeah uh things have been a little bit dicey yeah at times we've realized that podcasts probably shouldn't have gaps for thought and then yeah. also so from now on it's going to be a monologue it's as gonna... i do the rap from rap god you a human i'm a human that's all i know that's no i know. actually don't i um chamalama dimalama you a human i'm a human what i gotta do to get it through to you i'm superhuman that's i'm very impressed thanks good job thanks we have a rapper uh, okay, so what's today's podcast about? Um, today's podcast, I will be teaching the world about education. No, <laughs> <laughs> I will be educating the world, world about, about teaching. teaching. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, no, about body language. Interesting. And this is a very poignant episode because it's a podcast, so you can't actually see. Our you bodies. can't see our body language. Yeah, so I had a great idea for a game. Which is where I act out the body language and Nick guesses. Yeah. But... Wouldn't really work for you mm, if you're listening. Um, one of the small hurdles we had to jump over. Minor it, ones. It didn't take long. It was... No, that's no, a pretty not terrible idea. That. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But in fact, what we are going to do is 20 questions as our original game. Yeah. Okay. Actually... We're going to do 20 no questions. 20 no questions. That's is... a bit of a variation, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Would you like to tell the viewers what that means? You say no instead of yes. Okay. No, it's actually not. Um, Basically, you don't say any questions. You just... I'm thinking of a person. And then Nick says a person. And I say no warmer or no colder. So, basically, it's really hard so, because you're not asking questions. You're just just as, a, as a quick... Uh, not caveat... Quick point, the first the first name that I guess, obviously, she can't say warmer or colder because there's no point of reference. So the first one will just be no or yes if I'm incredibly lucky. And then the subsequent names, it'll be warmer or colder, and I have to guess it based on kind of semantic uh, information about those people as to as to what maybe the person that she's thinking of does, looks mm-hmm. like, is, etc. Okay. So, I'm thinking of person. Okay. Um, Tom Hanks. No. <laughs> did you just try to think of warmer or Yeah, I did, and I was like, what am I comparing to? <laughs> um, okay, um, Scott Morrison. Uh, Colder. Um, okay. Um, Ken Jong. Warmer. Um. Wow, well, that wasn't because we were listening to that podcast earlier. No, no, no. Was that why? Was it's that? a great podcast. Yeah. Joel um, McHale. <laughs> Ken Jeong, Joel McHale, Darkest Timeline. If you're a community fan, we'll check it out. But more importantly, listen to our podcast. I'm a community fan too. Listen to me. Um, <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, okay, so Tom Hanks was no. Then we went to politicians and it was cold. And then we went back to an actor who's also a doctor and it was warmer. Yes. I doubt the doctor has anything to do with it. Well, maybe. How do you know? Unless it's, it's Trump point. because he's a doctor. <laughs> Yes. He knows everything about <laughs> that there is to know about medicine and all the things that he doesn't know are just lies mm. made up by the uh, the fake news. Okay. Excellent. So we're um, on Ken Jong. We're on Ken Jong. You know, I realise now that I haven't uh, widened the search to include more than one gender. Mm. So I'm going to say... Um, it would be really funny if you only said Ken Jong was warmer because he's a more feminine person. <laughs> um, that would be funny. Okay, I'm going to say... Let's think of a good actress. Um, Alison Brie. Colder. So it's not a female. How do you know? Because Alison Brie is a female. Yeah, but maybe her personality just doesn't mesh quite with the person. I'm also, talking. I'd like to say I've, I've um, out of the four guesses I've had, two of them have been community uh, cast. So there's nothing <laughs> I, on my I mind or anything. Yeah. Um, okay. Um. Um. Uh, Dwayne Johnson. Colder. So they're Asian. <laughs> no. I mean... Oh, uh, big clue giveaway. Darn it. 21, no questions. Um, okay. 
my thought process here is now derailing a little bit. Um, I'm. This is a really hard game. Yeah, it is really hard. Um, it also relies on both of us knowing the people. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. I've only I've literally covered what politicians and actors. Um, are there any other professions in the world? I no, don't know. I don't think so. But famous people, not really, right? I mean, it could. Um. Sports stars. <laughs> yeah, Lance like you, like you're gonna ask me about a sports star. Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. Mhm. That's my guess. Colter. <laughs> <laughs> what am I up to? Um. Um, you said... No, how many guesses have I had? Oh, like six. I don't like know, six. I didn't actually count. I, I, what have I said? Six. Tom Hanks, Ken Jeong. Tom Hanks, politician. Tom Hanks, um, Scomo. Pol- Scomo. Ken Jeong, Alison Brie, Dwayne Johnson, mm-hmm. and... Number six. Lance Armstrong. Um, okay, uh, Ryan Gosling. Calder. Um, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Michael, oh, uh, not Michael Scott. Um, <laughs> Steve Carell. Mama. John Krasinski. Um, no, well, I mean, yes, I mean, no, but, um, I'd say Calder. Calder. Um, Ricky Gervais. Um, maybe, yeah, Mama. I really don't think so. They're not an actor, are they? I don't know. But I, I don't know, and I don't know how to narrow the search down. Yeah. Because if we're going by profession, there's no way to know if you're right about the profession or if they're guessing a different aspect yeah. of the person. I know. So far, I'm pretty convinced it's a white male. No comment. That's all. That, that's all I've got so far. Then probably not a politician. Because actor was closer than that. Mm-hmm. Um, are, are you doing this based on physical features or? No. Okay. Personality traits. Personality traits. Oh my mm. god, that's even harder. Okay. Um. Ricky Gervais. Kyle Sandlin. Cold. So he's not a radio presenter. <laughs> I hope. Um, you hope. Um, did profession play a role in your colder warmer? Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, so you see, the reason that this is such an excellent game is because it really stretches your imagination. And also stretches the time out in car trips, which might not be the best thing for a yeah, podcast, but I'm going to keep going anyway. And l- perhaps searching good games to play in car trips before we started the podcast. Might not have been the best idea. Yeah. But if we were on a car trip, and maybe you are on a car, maybe you're driving right now. Yeah. If you are driving right now, I hope you're enjoying our car trip game. Because, it's trust me, <laughs> by the time this game finishes, you'll probably be where you need to be. <laughs> um, um, okay. Uh, Who's the last one you guess? Carl Sandy Lance. Because and that was Sandy Lance. <laughs> um, like yeah, that was, that was 11, I think. Because I'm trying to give myself extra guesses. The next sure, one I'm going to go for is... Um, um, so hard. This is yeah. really hard. If you're, if you're listening to this right now, try and think up some names of people. And, and then telepathically after, do the, it well, back in time. Maybe try and this with another person then, because it is genuinely difficult to, yes. to be able to, to think about how to narrow it down. Yeah. Um, the one thing I do have is Alana's body language to read. It's true. But more on that right later. Right now, I am crossing my leg and warming my hand. That was just trying to be a, next a, to your a cool um, Thanks. segue into the next section, but not a segue, but just a reference. Yeah, a reference. Yeah. Like your space one last week. That was excellent. I was impressed with that. Mm-hmm. Um, Lunig. Um, nice, but also uh, cold. I have a bunch of Lunig um, cartoons stuck up on my wall so that's where I got yeah, that idea next from. to look up at the La La Land poster and be like which you made Ryan Gosling that's I already said Ryan Gosling oh <laughs> <laughs> already I said done. Ryan Reynolds 
but also no, both of them are cold. Andrew like, Reynolds. Um, cold though. If you don't know, Andrew Reynolds was in the Book of Mormon as Elder Price. Yes. Incredible actor. Yes, and um, singer. And singer. And dancer. And personality in general. And performer. And performer. Yeah, and he's like forty, and he looks fifteen. <laughs> yeah. Much like myself. Mm-hmm. Except I'm not forty, and I don't look fifteen. No. Um, the only two things different yeah. and I can't sing well and I can't <laughs> act and I'm going to be calling you Andrew from now on thank you okay so we're up to 14 I believe yeah we are Um, I was really hoping it was Tom Hanks I love Tom Hanks yeah Um. okay this is really really hard yeah 14 I know. okay I'm just going to go through I'd say they're in the arts somewhere a lot of famous people tend to be. That's fair. Maybe singer. I haven't thought about singers yet. Um. Um. <laughs> now it's just time to think of singers. Um. Which Frank Sinatra, Adele. <laughs> well, we know it's not a woman, so Adele's well. Well. Adele's out. But well. Is she really a woman? Yes, well. she is. Yes. Um. Um. What's his name? Come of Chameleon Man. Um, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Wasn't that song yeah. by the, um, by a group? Not by a single? Uh, my, 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 my. Boy, boy George. Oh, right, think, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Um, how about we go for... You only have six more questions. Let's bang it out. And then it'll be over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like ripping a band-aid off. Very, In very slow. In our next slowly. podcast, we'll be talking about euthanasia. Yes. <laughs> Maybe we'll save that uh, for a later one. Yes. Okay. I am now genuinely just going to my Spotify to find artists because I want this to go faster. Yes. I feel bad. Van Halen. Colder. So he's not a singer. All that for that. <laughs> um, he's an, he, I, I'd say he's an actor. He's white. Our microphone's falling off. It's, oh no. um, it was stayed on, taped on so well last time, and now the tape's kind of dying. Um, yeah, okay. How about, while I keep thinking, you tape it, and the okay. viewers and will, you will have some, some nice ASMR exactly. of tape getting put on a, a tripod um, with a really crudely attached microphone on top of it. Okay. If you'd like to keep see a guessing. picture of this microphone, at some point we'll post it to one of our social medias. Yes, of which we have many right now. Of which we will have some soon. Okay. Um. This is so difficult. Yeah. Uh, we'll Jack guess. Black. Of oh, course not. One more. Um. Five more. Okay. Um. Uh. But Andrew Reynolds was was colder. Yes. So if I say Josh Gad, I'm co- Josh Gad. Colder. Okay, that's a shame. <laughs> I thought I had. It. I thought I had. It. Um. Jack Black's warmer. Um, okay. So, like a kind of slapstick comedian, I would say. Interesting. Because you've said Steve Carell as well. Not so much slapstick, but something to do with comedy. Interesting. Um, Interesting. Mark Manson. Uh, Colder. Is that him? That's his name? Who he is. Wasn't that that, that stand-up comedian we watched? No, that was Mark Maron. That's the one I meant. Um, Colder. Okay. Um... Sorry, Mark. Um, <laughs> I know you're listening. He was funny. He was. I enjoyed that a lot. Slightly irrelevant. Irrelevant. Irreverent is what I was trying irreverent, to say. Irreverent, yeah. Yes, for but sure. isn't that good? It is good sometimes. You like irreverent. Okay. Two more. Um, three more? Okay. Three more. Three, three, more. three more, but we can say two. Because if, if, I, I did get the he's not Asian clue in there. Yeah. Um, I'm just tr- honestly just trying to think of actors that remind me of Steve Carell, Jack Black. Kind of Ken Jeong. They're all comedic. They're all comedic actors. Okay. I, I like the train of thought. Comedic actors. Dwayne Johnson's a comedic actor, mm. in a way. But not really. He's like Is he even Cena. an actor, really? Yeah. What no one's like I John Cena. Except you're, you're welcome. welcome. That was nice. Um. Good job. Go us. We should turn this into a singing channel. <laughs> we might have to if you don't 
make two more guesses. So. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is really, really, really difficult. I think we should move on. Or at least I you really want you to guess two more. But it's so hard. Okay, it was Rowan Atkinson. Oh, because I got there. And incredibly, I did. I thought that was going to take like two minutes. Mm. And then I'd have to like wait around for like ten minutes before I transition into my section. Are you sure but you, you don't want me to do a to, funny question now? Yeah, but you managed to extend it out for long enough that you're, I can go into my section. You're so welcome. So, in the Johnny English movies, which Rowan Atkinson played in... In one of the movies, they say, "Have um, we've seen your like micro language," mm. and then she that? slows it down. The like second one. Which one's that? Strikes again. I don't know. What was it? Second one. I'm pretty sure it was strikes the, again. Yeah, was where that... he was a he was a monk and then he came back, and then that is such a good movie. Yeah, and um, she's like, he's like. <laughs> I'm a trained spy. I don't have any micro language. And then mm. she slows it down and he's like, oh, ooh, oh, uh, oh yeah, 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 I do remember that scene, actually. Yeah. Anyway, so that's an example of body language. So I have some really interesting facts, which I think we can discuss as we go through. And then just some more facts, and but then, like less interesting, but more in depth. And then after that, we can talk about how incredible of a franchise Johnny English is. Yeah. And how Rowan Atkinson might be one of the best comedic actors of all time. Interesting. His stand-up, even, is incredible. I actually have never seen a stand-up. But, so, one researcher notes that the average person actually speaks words for a total of about 10 to 11 minutes a day, whereas we make and recognise about 25,000 facial expressions daily. I'm raising my hand to ask a question. Yes, student. Are we skewing that statistic by talking for an hour straight? On our podcast, <laughs> possibly. Did but then, but then, the people who are being silent listening to us That's for an true. hour or, are reverse skewing it. Or do you think the people listening to us are yelling at us? Please stop this stupid twenty questions segment. It's gone on for fifteen minutes. Yeah, that's quite possible. I've already arrived where I was going. I'm just. I just here wanted now. to learn about body language. I just wanted to learn about body ruined. language, and all I've done is listen to Nick fail to think of actors for fifteen minutes. Yes. Quite possibly. That, but the, the, the amount of times we've watched this by the time it gets published, that's that's the hours that that's, are skewing. That's a good back point, down. actually. That's a very good point. Okay, yeah, I love listening to my voice for many mm-hmm. hours straight. It's so much fun. Um, when reading body language, fourteen to sixteen areas of a woman's brain are active. Whereas, when reading body language, men show just four to six active areas. That's interesting. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Yeah. And also, related to that, when asked to decode a silent movie, 87% of women in a study were able to guess what was happening, but men could only guess correctly 42% of the time. That's under half. However, homosexual men and men in highly emotional jobs, such as nursing, teaching, and acting, did nearly as well as women. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see that study. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting. Yes. I'm... I do not have the study on hand, okay. so I'll let you do I'll, your research. I'll do my research later, and I'll get back to you. Um, lip pointing, because finger pointing is almost universally rude, some um, cultures, Latin Americans, Native Americans, and Filipinos, point with their lips, like duck lips, like, you over there. Mm. Mm. I know a few influencers who do the same thing. Mm. They really like their cameras. They're like, there's the camera. There's the camera. There's the, there's camera. the microphone. Mm-hmm. Microphone. Microphone right there. The hang loose sign means stay cool, relax in Hawaii, six in Japan, and would you like a drink in Mexico? Um, I have a really interesting point about this. Mm-hmm. Sorry to interrupt. That's but I think it's, it's a really about. good interest. It's a really interesting um example in pop culture and in, in media. If you've seen the film Inglorious Bastards, have you seen the film Inglorious Bastards, Alana? Part of it, part of it. There's a certain scene um, when they are basically the bastards, the group of Jewish American soldiers, um, are going into a, a town in Germany to try and, and talk to this woman who has intel for them, I believe. She was a spy or something like that. She, she owns a cinema and she is part of the resistance to plan, planning to overthrow Hitler. Anyway, 
so the, these these undercover American Jewish soldiers are uh, are posing as German soldiers and officers mm. in a bar in mm. kind of rural Germany, um, and this 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 group of soldiers, actual German soldiers, comes into the bar, um, and if you want an exercise in tense filmmaking, that whole scene is incredible. It is amazing. You should watch it if you if you have any interest in film. Um, but there's a certain part in that scene. I'm not going to go over the whole thing where. The, the one of the one of the bastards, one of the people posing as German officers, orders three beers with his index finger, middle finger, and ring finger pointed up. And you see a tiny glance inside of the German officer's, the actual German officer's eye, and he goes as he does this. And then from that moment on, there's a much more tension in the scene. And then the German officers eventually basically p- attack them. And the guy says, what gave it away? And he says, in Germany, we order three beers with the pinky finger, ring finger, and middle finger instead of the index. Incredibly, I have a very, very similar fact, not in my interesting facts section, but in my less interesting, more in-depth facts section. Okay. So, um, yeah, I l- watched a video by the an ex-FBI agent who decoded body language. And he said that they were they were told that they thought that there was a mole in some business. Mm. And so they found one video of him coming out of a flower shop. And people were like, well, what are we going to get here? There's nothing here. And he takes flowers. And in America, you hold flowers yeah. stem up yeah. to protect the flowers. Whereas in Eastern Europe, you hold it stems with the uh. flowers down. So he held it like that. And then he said... So they took him in. After that, they were like, he's obviously a mole. He's yeah. not from here. Um, and they took him in and instead of... He said, I did a presumptive. Which instead of being like, we know it was you. Mm. being Just being like, do you know how we know? And mm. he, he looked like really, really scared. So yeah. obviously... He was, that was something that, to know. Yeah. And then they said it was the flowers. And yeah. as soon as they said it was the flowers, he confessed completely. That's fascinating. And I have another fact that there's a book called, I think it's Codename Violet. I haven't heard of it. Um, It's really interesting. It's basically about a spy living in a prison, just talking about her life in a prison. Right. And um, it was based off a true story about someone she got captured because she went to cross the road and looked the wrong way mm. and someone noticed and that captured would be her a and it's actually, actually yeah i hadn't thought about it yeah that's very interesting yeah body language is amazing it is um i do you want to hear some more fun facts or some in-depth fact info um whatever you feel like maybe a couple more fun i'm enjoying the fun facts okay um Crossing one's finger actually used to be trying to make the sign of the cross. So it began as a way to ask God for protection without attracting the attention of pagans. That's really interesting. Um, so, yeah. I have a fun fact. Mm-hmm. Um, thumbs up for us. Us land-dwelling creatures means all good. Oh, there's another fact of it uh, in, on the screen. Okay. Well, my fact is that th- thumbs up in, in land lovers... Uh, Hand vocabulary is what I'm going to call it. Mm -hmm. It means all good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. If you're scuba diving Mm -hmm. and you do the thumbs up, it means help. I can't breathe. I need to get to the surface. Oh, really? And on the set of Harry Potter, I'm making a (laughs) lot of film. um, Yeah. I'm making a lot of film references. On the set of Harry Potter, I watched it behind the scenes with Daniel Radcliffe at one point where he was doing a scuba scene where he was underwater and he did this. And appara- and he said he said apparently that's a big no no. You're meant to, you're meant to do <laughs> the symbol where you, where you okay like the okay symbol thumb yeah and ring thumb and, and that's um, the that's the scuba yeah. diving okay one yeah. yeah wow did he get swooped away apparently yeah <laughs> that would be but he, yeah. he and then they were like what was wrong he's like I was good yeah <laughs> I was all good because he was doing his thumbs up yeah so yeah. Little, little things like that are really, really interesting. I actually have another thumbs up sign right on screen, which mm. means it means good to Westerners, one to Italians, five to Japanese, up <laughs> yours in Greece, and in Iran, it is a phallic reference. So, <laughs> lots of lots of things that one Maybe Daniel Radcliffe was really just saying, up yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... Or, this water and is then really cold. He's saying... <laughs> <laughs> he's saying... Up yours, and then, then later he's like, "I'll help," and they're mm. like, "No, we're not no. going to help you." He said, "Up yours." They give so. him the, the old Western up yours. Yeah, yeah. Um, so 
Um, a woman has a wider ranging peripheral vision, which allows her to check out a man's body from head to toe without getting caught, whereas male's peripheral vision is poorer, which is why men will move their gaze up and down a woman's body in a very obvious way. Men do not ogle more than women. Their tunnel vision means they just get caught more easily. I so. would never. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I know why you're just always looking at my arms. Yes. Okay. Just this is an excellent vision. segment, and we're moving on now. <laughs> um, and women laugh at men they're attracted to, and men are attracted to women who laugh at them. From a man's perspective, That's true. saying a woman has a good sense of humour doesn't mean she makes jokes. It means she laughs at his jokes. True. You laugh at my jokes. Don't tickle me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make you laugh. I can suppress all laughs. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, now that you've finished the fun fact section, we're going to move on to in-depth fact section. Just about some general ideas. So, what would you imagine, look, without looking at the screen, what would you imagine that crossing your arms means? I, I, uh, from what I knew before reading what I saw on the screen, it's a kind of a closing yourself off. Um, yeah. Defensive kind of, I don't feel safe. Interestingly, yes, it is an I don't feel safe, but it's not angry. No, it's, no, 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 that's, that's yeah. not what I meant, yeah. It's, but, you're meant to be hugging yourself. Like you were with it as a child. Um, Fun childhood you had. <laughs> as you sit in the corner crying, yeah. hugging yourself. That's right. And then looking around isn't deception, as many people have said it is, but it is instead processing info. And um, like often, like in Western cultures, we read from left to right, we see history from left to right. Mm. So if you're thinking into the past, you look over to your left, into the future, you look to your right. If you're accessing different parts of your brain, left or right brain. Mm, not sure about that, but yeah. They, some people believe that. Yep, some people also believe that the, the earth is flat. But you know what? There is more okay, evidence okay. to this, but yes, okay. Yes. Have you have you read that that has been disproven, or just that it hasn't been proven? No, I just haven't read that it's been proven. Yeah, and I think it would. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense for it because I don't. Although the although the brain is completely connected to itself, as in every neuron, at some point, if you go through a long enough circuit, even if you go down the spinal cord and go back up, it'll connect to other neurons. Every other neuron. Yeah. That doesn't mean that when your eyes move, that activates memories yeah, of the past. Can... Because the memory is in the hippo hippocampus and the eyes are back here. Yeah. Um, eye movement is not... Or also the motor cortex for the cilia muscles. Yeah. Here is where we enter the interesting world of is NLP, which is neuro-linguistic programming, I think, huh? a real science. In which it is not a real science, but it's backed up by observation, but not scientific studies. So See also, Sigmund Freud... <laughs> this is an anti-Freud, an anti-Freud zone apparently on the on the right. Yeah. Very anti-Freud zone. Not right wing, but anti-Freud for <laughs> sure. Okay. Um. Also, if you cough or you touch your mouth, it is a self-soother. What about if I touch someone else's mouth? Am that I would probably them? be aggressive. Oh no! Oh no! Very just, aggressive. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, this FBI fa agent said that he always looks at people's hair first to see if it's unkempt or not. Mm -hmm. Um, then he looks at their clothes. Mm -hmm. Then he looks at their forehead lines. So basically, are they stressed? Then they have forehead lines. If they have, um, there's a line just in this middle here, right between your nose and your forehead that mm -hmm. people have if they get stressed a lot. Um... And a lot, as in in the current moment, or over their lives. Well, both. If it's like a, if it's like an etched line over their lives, but if it's in the current moment, it's. So, what would be interesting to them? Would it just be the current, or would they look at someone and say, "You're often stressed. Maybe you're in a stressful situation. Maybe you're a spy." Kind of thing. Both. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, then they look at their eyes to see if they've had enough sleep lately, uh, or, or if or marijuana. Drugs. Yeah. Or if drugs. Um. And apparently, so if you don't like something, you do a, a bunny nose. So just like a little, 
scrunch up your nose, which also activates that nose, mm. that line. But like sometimes it's kind of it's almost impossible to repress the scrunch of your nose, but it's easier to repress the forehead scrunch just because it's more muscles. Um, then when you don't like something, you can press your lips, but or suck them in if you really really don't like them. <laughs> And, um, just like that, you just obviously like, don't like this conversation very much at all. Hate it. Yes. Hate it's it so much. I don't want to be here. I'm kidding. I love being here. Excellent. Um, so they also see, to see if people are trying to suppress these, and if they're trying to suppress them, firstly, it shows that they're trained, but secondly, it shows that they're trying to hide something mm. from other people. Um... Yeah, so there's some other facts in here, but I think we're going to go back to some fun facts to break it up. <laughs> Those were quite fun. I enjoyed them. Okay, that's good. Um, Again, women, men, difference. But when feeling discomfort, men typically prefer to touch their faces, but women touch their necks, clothing, jewellery, arms, and hair. Nick is currently touching his face to show much discomfort. So much. <laughs> Neck touching or massaging is a powerful and universal stress reliever and pacifier. However, pregnant women will go to touch their neck and then completely divert to her belly as if to cover her fetus. That's interesting. Yeah. And this isn't related at all, but I remember reading a story about a pizza delivery driver. This is not at all (laughs) related. I'm so sorry, but it's breaking it up a bit. Mm. Um, A pizza delivery driver, and whenever he would suddenly break his car, he would put his arm out to... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to, to prevent the pizza from falling over and he was he went on a date with a girl and had to slam his brakes and he put his arm out in front of her <laughs> and she said oh that's so sweet of you you really care about me and he's like yeah and he didn't have the guts to tell her no there's usually pizza there and that's why <laughs> i did it <laughs> i think i'd protect the pizza first as well over me yeah definitely fair enough yeah People who tend to take up more space through their daily activities also tend to be more self-assured, more confident, and of higher social status. Mm, interesting. Yes. Is I that where man spreading came from? Fat people. Is that the, if that's what they meant? I doubt it. If like I don't think that large people. I don't think that having take more up space, body mass gives you a higher. Or society. if they genuinely meant walking around, like taking up, going around more space. I would say it would mean personal space, wouldn't you think? So, like, yeah, but why would you take up more space during daily activities? You're the one who got these facts, not me. True. <laughs> Do your research, Alana. Do your research. Rip. Um, yeah. So, similar to that, splaying out on a couch or a chair is normally a sign of comfort. However, when serious issues are being discussed, splaying can indicate territorial or dominance behavior display and here we see an excellent example of um a behavior to show disinterest and that is the yawn i yawned but it was because i didn't have much oxygen in my lungs it wasn't because i was bored or tired there it goes again (laughs) (laughs) i would like to say for the record that that was her leaning into the mic and making a noise um Teenagers will sit split, splayed out on a couch or chair as a non-verbal way to dominate their environment. Oh, what about when they turn 20? <laughs> That's basically a teenager. You're, yeah. you're still a teenager at heart. I'm actually 21. 21? Yeah. That's just 20 I am still a teenager. plus one. It is. Or so it's just a teenager with the mindset of a baby. <laughs> That's how age works. Yeah, yeah. You just add them. (laughs) That's how age works. Oh, this was my favourite fact. I was so excited about telling you this fact. Because it relates to what we said last time about children. I mean, not children. People who are blind reacting um, Mm. to something going towards their eyes. But children who are born blind will cover their eyes when they hear bad news. Mm. Isn't that amazing? That is really that it's just ingrained in you so hard. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So there are other other things that indicate people are lying. Um, brushing your legs is supposed to pacify was... you. That's a real yawn. That's a real yawn. As you were saying that, I was brushing my legs. 
You're pacifying yourself. Pacifying myself. Excellent. Because this conversation is just so exciting. Mm. You are excited. I'm excited. So you needed to calm yourself down. Which is why I yawned. Mm. From excitement. Mm -hmm. And pulling out collar is especially clear in men um, who try to ventilate their sweatiness when something bothers them. (laughs) This isn't going to do anything if I'm really sweaty. Just going to push the the smell out. (laughs) Because according to you... I'm a very smelly person. You do have a bit of Hercus. 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 That one's for the for the listeners who've been here since episode one. <laughs> <laughs> All. All two of them. Yes. Three now. We haven't now. posted them yet. We haven't posted them yet. But hopefully a hundred. All hundred. All hundred. We've All managed listeners. to collect a hundred listeners in that would three be good. episodes. How many of them? We're going to look be back me? on this and laugh and be like, "Ha ha, hundred listeners. We have." 3,000. Oh. <laughs> no. Both, no. We, we kind yeah. of diverted there. Diverged. 12 is more likely. Yeah. 12 and would be nice. the blink rate is usually about eight times per minute, but you blink more when you lie. You blink a lot less when you're looking at screens. So if you're currently watching this and you're, you're watching us, don't forget to blink, you know? And on top of that, as is customary, drink water. And if you've made tea, don't forget it. Go and drink it now. Excellent advice. We'll be here when you get back. I will be drinking my water right now. Let's all, you know what? Let's all have a, let's all have a water There's break, okay? ASMR water. ASMR of us drinking water. <sighs> That's probably more disturbing than. than yeah, that, going, we've gone down to eleven after that. Yeah, we. Explore new avenues every podcast. I really think that we could almost do a whole episode on the body language in poker. Yeah. Because that is gold mine. Mm. Um, yeah, well, they the in this video, which was by Wired, so if you want to check it out, it's going into more depth than what I can do here. Mm. So that's fine. That's fine. Um, that's what, I'm just where? trying to give an overview. That's right. So that's, I'm not trying to say I'm the expert in body language, but no. just broaden your horizons about a really, really interesting topic. So, in poker, this video, there was someone shifting in the chair, another person was grabbing the shoulder. Their own shoulder? Uh, I'm not sure. Shoulder, <laughs> I don't or know, the, I didn't write the, notes well or the, or the shoulder of the dealer, being like, why did you not give me good cards? I think it was their own shoulder. Oh, like this. Like I was thinking of that, and that's kind of weird, but this was like... Like teapot mood. Yeah, but... um. Real teapot hours. Yeah. Well... Or like a, a butterfly. Um, and then this woman's shoulder was rather high with her hands on top of her cards, pressing them down or caging them, um, which is basically saying that they're more precious to her. Mm. Um, then withdrawn hands means you're something you don't like and don't want to touch them. Mm-hmm. And shuffling chips is very self-soothing. Um, one thing I will say about the shuffling chips thing is that every single, well, a lot of poker players do it, and I feel like it's got to a point where it's something that they do to cover other things rather than it being a a tell of anything. Possibly. Like, a a lot of really good players consistently just do this with their chips. Um, And I feel like they've developed it as a way of maybe Mm. covering other... Or maybe it's soothing them into, like, a meditative state so they focus on everything. Maybe. It's possible. <laughs> but I, I, I feel like it's more of yeah. a distraction or just something to keep their hands busy while they think. Yeah. But keeping your hands busy, busy while you think it usually means something else. Like... No. Yeah. No, because they think... <laughs> because the way that... The way that poker is played at that level is thinking about what could they have? What is their range? What's the range of possible hands they could have? So you go to mm-hmm. a lot of things in your head at once. And this might just be something they do automatically. It's not indicative of everything because they do it every single hand, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. If they only do it on a hand and then you see that they only do it on certain hands and then after at the end of those hands they always have a good good card or they never yeah. show what they had after those hands. That means they're either bluffing or they have a good hand every time they do that. Yeah. But if they're doing it every single hand... Like in that episode of The Office where the, it's Casino Night. Excellent episode. And um, US Office, by the way. and The worst one. The better one. And, um... See, we're, we're, we're pandering <laughs> to both audiences, but the UK one is better. In the better office, the US one, um, Jim and Dwight are playing a game of poker, and Dwight, you accosted Dwight, and he goes, 
Jim, I'm an excellent poker player, and Jim has a tell every time mm. he um has an excellent hand. He coughs, mm. uh, yeah. and then it goes to Jim, and he coughs, mm. and then Dwight it goes, oh, God, and puts his hands down, and then cuts to Jim, and he's like, it's the funniest thing. <laughs> every time I cough, Dwight folds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting example of um, correlation versus causation. Yeah. From Dwight's perspective. Yeah. But there you go. Mm-hmm correlation being that he um correlation being that he thought that the cough was Would well like it's hard to, to say it? it's hard to because he thinks it's causation whereas it's actually correlation yeah exactly. yeah that's what that's people what, always do. yeah there's an event you have an event a yeah that's true i guess so yeah. you have an event a that you then immediately after event a you see event v event b happen and so in your mind the brain is pretty much wired to think oh that must have caused that Whereas really, event A happened before event B, but there was an event C which caused event B, mm. rather than the other way around. Or event B caused event A. It went in, uh, in the opposite direction to what you think. Cool. If My you last... want to have a um, statistics podcast, I'm very excited. Yes. I imagine there's no wanting that will happen. It will happen. No matter what. No matter what. Um, maybe more than one. Maybe a whole season. Maybe. Maybe. So, next thing is, I just have two more points, um, is that, oh, actually three more. That's a really exciting fact. But, um, basically, he showed a video where these people were close up to each other and then he comes in and goes, are you comfortable with how close you are to each other? Mm. And one woman says yes and the other one says no. And then goes away and they're all both standing really far apart mm. and rocking and acting really awkward. But my last two fun facts is if you have a video and you want to see some telling body language, um, put, a, put it on double speed so you'll see people's head bobbing around, you'll see them hugging themselves. It won't, be, it won't be to the degree that it is in Johnny English. <laughs> that is true. If you want that, you need millions of dollars of funding and a director who's good and an actor like Rowan Atkinson. Um, Sorry for derailing your point. Yeah, well, my final point is that it's actually been proven that people with Botox often have a relationship that ends. because I wonder why that is. Because they can't see the other person's emotion, so they can't get any emotional cues. and so That must be so tough for them devastating if you're listening we're attempting our best to uh impersonate I think botox that was quite clear by the voices it know? might have been but they Sustance. might have also thought that their internet was just not working very well ha ha very true when women laugh at my jokes <laughs> i think they have a good sense of humor yes okay you have a good sense of humor did you know that well thank you you're not self-serving yourself at all at this point in my life um your life yeah i don't know why i said that i just kept meant to say this point in time but instead i said my life um yeah and that is to conclude body language but it's very very interesting so i Um, highly recommend doing some research on it i agree i agree i enjoyed that a lot i think it's very interesting how much of, of that you can see in movies yes um and just as a reminder for anyone who was listening and thinking, I should listen to what they were, or what, look what they were saying about, talking about, and then you've forgotten, Inglorious Bastards, Johnny English, Wired, did the video on it. Mm-hmm. FBI Tradecraft, Body Language. That's cool. what it's called. But especially Inglorious Bastards. Okay. <laughs> now, if you're a, a regular to the last two, mm-hmm. and now the third, mm-hmm. you know what's coming up next. Um, still don't have a still don't have a song for it to introduce it uh, to introduce it. Wish I did. As of now, but we might. Have we might it have by one. You know what? We post it. So we might. We might. We, we might. might. We, we might, might not. Get very inspired tomorrow. Maybe. So if there is a song immediately after what I say now, enjoy. That's that's the song. Okay. <laughs> This game, if you haven't listened before or you forgot, either are possible. I look at the website The Onion, the satirical news website, 
and I look at a particular subreddit which has articles that could be from the onion but are actually real and I pick one and I tell it to Alana and she has to guess and you can guess whether it's a real article or it's from its satire whether it's fake um, and today I'm very excited because I have some excellent new ones that we haven't seen before mm. I still have a backlog of stuff that I, I could use, but I got some fresh ones today, so I'm going to use some of them. Okay? Mm-hmm. Number one. Man busted for taking his fish out on walk during pandemic. <laughs> I think that this might be the onion. Okay. Because I think that people would laugh and not be busted. No, he wouldn't be busted. I think they'd be like, lol, there's a fish on a skateboard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a real article. Aw, he shouldn't have been busted. Um, in Spain, uh, an unidentified man in northern Spain was busted this week for having taken, for taking his fish on a walk in its bowl. He appeared to be trying to take advantage of a rule allowing pet owners to leave their homes so that their pets can relieve themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a picture of him here. Um... Mm, and they arrested someone, a T-Rex owner. During, a T-Rex this, during, <laughs> during T-Rex the state owner. of alert, pets are allowed to walk accompanied by a person, always with short walks to relieve themselves, their tweet said. Having a Tyrannosaurus Rex is not covered. And that was in reference to a guy in the Tyrannosaurus Rex, cost- Rex costume that I'm sure you've all seen. Mm. Going around the internet for the last few years. Yes. And never getting old. Never. Have you seen the Tyrannosaurus Rex skateboarding? No, but I've seen ice skating, and that's pretty much yeah, That it. would be pretty good, too. I used to have a thing where I didn't like my friend's Instagram posts. Because, mm. I don't know, I didn't go on Instagram. I didn't mm. like things, except if they genuinely made me laugh, yeah. which was quite self-centred. But, you well, know, no, that, really. was my, that's that was my decision I like at that. 12 years I respect age. that. Yeah. And my friend texted me one day being like, how come you didn't like my post, but liked a post of a Tyrannosaurus Rex <laughs> Um, uh, figure skating, and honestly, if, it was if, self-explanatory. If you have to ask that question, <laughs> watch the video. What? Who are you? Yeah, it was Tyrannosaurus Rex ice skating, and you think that your post deserves more likes than that? Never. Never. Not Never. possible. Okay. Next article. Yes. Well, so you're zero from one so far. Okay. Which is about on par for your efforts in the past. I. Sorry, you have done pretty well. Yes. Correct. Okay. Taiwan launches new baseball season with cardboard fans in the stands. Um, well, I saw that they launched a season where you can pay to have your photo on in mm. the stands, and I also saw that they launched a season with dolls and teddy bears in the mm. stands. Okay. So, I believe it's true. It is true. Yeah. Um, these are always annoying when you've seen them before, but <laughs> s- such is life in a in a... In a world where media is so accessible, right? So accessible. I have one that's quite related to that. Um, Taiwanese robot baseball fan ejected for yelling slurs at the pitch camera. <laughs> I hope so. I think it's an onion, though. Yeah, it's an onion. Yeah. It's really funny, though. Yeah. All right. We're going to do a few more. Yes. Three more. Three more? Yeah. Maybe four. Maybe four. Maybe four. Okay. Baby born in car park after paramedic mistook dad's call for help as cheering. And some (laughs) background. Um, Whether the article's true or not, I need to explain what that means. Basically, this article says that there was a a father and a mother in a car. Well, soon-to-be mother. Very soon-to-be. And she was going, having contractions. Um, Whatever. I'm an expert. Um, (laughs) Yeah. And... um, the father, the dad, her partner, was yelling through the window at a paramedic in, in his uniform walking by. But the paramedic thought that it was the guy cheering for him, like, act, being on the front line during the coronavirus. Oh, no. And so the guy was going, ha, ha, and the, the, the paramedic was going, yeah, <laughs> I'm doing my part. That's and so sad. And the baby sad. had to be born in the car. That's so sad. Real um, or lie? It's definitely true. It's true. Because? Because of the detail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Onion articles can be very detailed. Yeah, I know that. I thought, yeah. Because, yeah. I don't know. I just had a true feeling about yeah, that one. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, 
it's funny. Oh, also, I was going to say earlier when we had the Johnny English, mm. um, I had Johnny English written up in big letters on the screen, oh, yeah. and you didn't get to. I thought, oh, he's going to get this super quickly because he saw Johnny English. Oh no, and it's going to be subconscious. I didn't even get it. But no. Subconscious is overrated. Okay. You can quote me on that. Okay. Subconscious is underrated. You can quote me on that. Well, the, you can quote me on that is included in the quote. Subconscious is under, underrated. Nick, 2020. Subconscious is... Wait, underrated. Under, overrated. Yeah. Underrated. Overrated. Nick and Alana, no. 2020. <laughs> English is hard. Um, okay. <laughs> Wedding experts say engagement rings should cost at least three diamond miners' lives. Miners' <laughs> lives. God. Um. I think it's the onion. Because. Why do you think that? Um. There are some people who like to say silly things out loud, but I think wedding experts would not like to tell talk about death when relating to weddings. I mean. A a fifty percent no. A death would surely help a wedding expert as a business because if the person's married and their partner dies. Yeah, but you don't want going in, don't want to go into a wedding and be like, well, why are you even getting married? Because death is coming. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Have you already prepared your wedding vows? (laughs) 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 Because death is coming. And then you should. Does anybody should have an objection to should, the holy matrimony of these the two Grim people? Reaper I do. It's my wedding, but I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got that one right. You got the first one wrong. You got the second one correct. You got the third one right. So we're up. You're two out of three. Excellent. One more. Oh, maybe we two can more. fit two more. Two more, so it's best of five. Yeah. We've, had, we've 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 got a while left. Two more. You've still got a, you've still got the sound of our soothing voices for the next ten minutes. All right, golden retriever mauls five people in huge victory for pit bull apologists. <laughs> oh, amazing. Um, I don't think that a real article would be phrased like that. You said that before about real articles. But they wouldn't say pit in huge victory for pit bull. They'd be like. We're pretending to care, boo hoo. Mm. Um, a h- horrific event. Um, or like people, I ac- uh, advocates are acting insanely after horrific mauling right. by Labrador. You're right. It's an onion article, but it is incredible. It is. Funny. It might be one of the best ones I've ever done. <laughs> I've said that a lot. You say that, yeah. But it yeah. genuinely is very fun. All right. I'm running out of. I'm not, I'm not going to say which ones I'm running out of because that would kind of give away what the next ones are going to be. Mm. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do a couple of quick, just funny onion ones. Mm. I'm not even going to ask mm-hmm. you because they're so funny or so stupid. All right. Postal Service unveils plan to pay debts with new $1 trillion stamp. <laughs> um, where's another one? Black man shot by police after matching the description for COVID-19. What? (laughs) Alright, here's one. Black security guard who stops shooter is then shot and killed by police. That's so sad. Yeah. True or false? Onion or fake? That one? Mm -hmm. Onion or real? Um. That wasn't one of my obvious onion ones anyway. Yeah. It's probably onion because nope. that's the way. Oh, no. It's real. Oh, that's so sad. Yep. This was um, 2018, if anyone's interested. Um, God. Yeah. It's it's pretty atrocious. That's yeah. the problem. I don't, I don't like doing the real ones sometimes because they're sad. Yeah. And the onion ones... We'll touch on the same subjects, uh, but be funny, funny because they're well, not even funny, just kind of like a hit. Like that's really real. Like that. Yeah. That. Yeah. That hits a bit too close to home. Whereas these ones, kind of, yeah. I guess, show you why those ones do hit close to home. Yeah. With stuff like that. All right, I have I have a few more because these are all excellent. Doctor Fauci, is that how you say his name? Fauci. The Fauci. Fauci. I Sorry if I mispronounce your name. 
I hope he views our podcast. Dr. Fauci endorses Tinder hookups. Quote, if you're willing to take a risk. Unquote. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no way he'd endorse them. But I, I reckon he would say if you're willing to take the uh, take a risk. But I, I, he would he would never say. I think people should be outside of their homes. It's a real article, um, and I'll read it to you. It was from a, f- a couple of weeks ago, uh, April fifteenth. It was published. <laughs> I'll just read you the whole article because it is pretty good. Tired of having to live your sex life online during lockdown? You're in luck. Government coronavirus expert. Sorry. Ooh, an ad. An ad for Biden. Dr. Anthony Fauci says heartsick isolationists can hook up with asymptomatic Tinder matches in real life, but like love, it involves some risk. The 79-year-old immunologist dropped the unorthodox dating tip in a Tuesday interview on Snapchat's Good Luck America. Towards the end of the tape segment, Fauci was asked, if you're swiping on a dating app like Tinder, Bumble, or Grindr, and you match with someone that you think is hot, and you're just kind of like, maybe it's fine if this one stranger comes over, what do you say to that person? You know, that's tough, replied the befuddled National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases director to the curveball, because that's what's called relative risk. Then he dropped the bombshell. If you're willing to take a risk, and you know, everybody has their own tolerance for risks, you could figure out if you want to meet somebody, said Fauci, who was named a candidate for People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive Award. He added, if you want to go a little bit more intimate, well then that's your choice regarding a risk. This is also on Fox News. On Fox News. It is on Fox News. It is on Fox News. Some of these are. Yeah. Understandably. Yes. True. What other outlet would cover such things? <laughs> um, all right. Okay. Maybe I... one more. Yeah. Maybe one more. One Maybe more. one more. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. Surgeon General. Quote, this week, will be, uh, <laughs> this week will be like another Pearl Harbor, and not in a good way either. <sighs> Uh, what? <laughs> Real. Fake. Thank <sighs> God. <laughs> what did he mean? <laughs> I mean, it's an onion article, so, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah um, it's just ah, uh, I love that one. Oh my God. So, overall, what did you get? One. That was just a fun one. One. You got that wrong. You got that right. No, you got that wrong as well. Three. You got that. Did you get the black security guard wrong? I think so. So you got all the last three wrong. So you got two out of five. Woohoo! That, that might be a record for your lowest. Hmm. Although I haven't been keeping track of, of hmm. real scores. We can see in my laid back position <laughs> that I'm trying to assume superiority by taking up as much territory. Yeah, that's true. I'm, uh, what am I doing? I'm touching your neck to pacify you. <laughs> All right. And with that... I think that's enough for the uh, the body language episode. Without the looking ironic, at our body language. The ironic, most ironic podcast we've done so far on so body far. language. Yes. <laughs> um, but I'm sure there'll be more to come. Maybe we'll do one on deafness next. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so too. Yes. Well, once again, for the third time now, thanks for listening. Adios. Amigos. And goodbye. (laughs) (laughs) I was debating to stop the recording.